Before we'll take this rover to the first Polish LEGO Mars base, we have to go back to June 2022. Raspberry Pi just announced today Raspberry Pi Pico W with Wi-Fi. So I just bought it and I'm thinking about building a cool robot with that. I also bought this interesting chassis with mechan wheels for just $20. These special wheels are really often used in robotics because they let you drive in any direction you want. To design all the holders I took the picture of the chassis put it into Fusion 360, scaled it, and that way it was easier to design, but still, a random holes pattern is not helpful for any robotics project. But I have a solution to that problem, and I will show you that later. At the same time, I started creating Python program for controlling the robot and displaying the data. Here you can see a simple joystick I made in Pygame. Here I have all the clips I made for this video, and if you take a closer look at the days, the video of me programming in Python, is from August 5th, 2022, but the next clip is from 21st of September, 2022. And what happened between those two clips changed the direction of this project completely. In August, I attended a CubeSat summer school organized by European Space Agency in Belgium. I spent an incredible month with like-minded students and amazing people at the European Space Agency. Before going there, I, I obviously was quite interested in space, but during the summer school I fell in love with it, and my next video in fact will be just about the summer school experience at the European Space Agency, so make sure to subscribe to don't miss that. So when I got back home I realized how boring and down to earth the idea for this robot is, and I felt the need to complicate it and to take it to another planet. And that's how the mini Mars rover idea was born. There is no such thing as a Mars rover without a robotic arm, so that's what I started with and here I am designing it in Fusion 360. The best reward for spending a lot of time in your CAD software is a smooth assembly process. Of course, it wasn't the case for this project at all, not even close. It may look easy, but trust me, it wasn't easy and I had to redesign it multiple times to get it working properly, but more about that later in the video. For the chassis I decided to go once again with my open robotic platform concept. I also started working on a website for this project, so there will be more info soon. The main plate for the robot was machined on my DIY CNC machine in the mill out of 6mm plywood and painted white. Once the plate was ready, it was time to take what's nice on the boring chassis and attach it to the RP plate with some 3D printed arms. Thanks to standardized holes pattern, the main concept of the RP, it is super easy to design any holders or adapters and use those you already have. I wasn't planning that from the beginning, but as I added more and more to the project, I also designed the PCB and I produced it on my own with a modified 3018 CNC machine. After making a few of those PCBs on my own, I feel confident and I can quite easily get it right on the first try. It's also a lot of fun to design a PCB in the morning and have it ready in your hand by the afternoon. The result of a DIY legend is once again not that impressive but nice to have and better than nothing. Soldering a DIY PCB without a solder mask isn't easy, and it's easy to make a small, hard to find error, so testing is a bit nerve wracking and using a power supply with a current limit is a really good idea. 
Everything was okay and after setting up the PWM signal on the Pico, I saw a beautiful square wave on the oscilloscope. I'm not sure if this is just me, but every time my project gets to the advanced stage, I want to change stuff and I want to change a lot. Usually those are good and important improvements like making the frame more rigid, but sometimes adding special covers just to improve the look, which for me is just as important as the functionality. When the Python program was ready, I put everything together and test the arm. I quickly realized that the links are too long and those little servos can't handle that, so it was time to once again redesign the arm and replace the parts. That unfortunately reduced the range, but improved how the arm works overall and considering small microservers I used, the change was necessary. If you would like to know how to design a robotic arm like this one, a robotic arm that works, well before this one you have to design one that almost works and before this one you have to design one that doesn't work at all. And then after three tries, well you have a robotic arm that works. For this project I also bought an FPV screen and a camera. I never used an FPV system before and I have to say that I was quite impressed with the quality of the image and just how simple it is to set it up. And that is just a temporary camera holder that I will replace later with something much cooler. I also forgot to add any connector for the camera on the PCB, so I used the MOSFET that was there just in case if I would like to expand the system in the future, so the future is now, I decided to use this MOSFET to control the camera and thanks to that I can wirelessly turn it on and off to save the battery. Having a good hardware documentation, in this case just a simple schematic, simplifies the programming part a lot, huge advantage over undocumented connections on a breadboard. It was already working, but it does not look like a rover with all of those cables on top, so it was time to machine the top plate that will cover that. Here you can see confused me trying to figure out what's going on with the Indy mill. So, the X-axis driver that controls this motor is broken, probably because of the humidity, because we are deep underground here in the workshop, the humidity is high, and it kills the electronics. So I don't have the Indimu today to machine the plate, but I really want to have this plate today, so there is only one way to do it, the old-fashioned way. Let's do it. When that was finished I realized that the 6mm thickness wasn't a requirement. It was just an assumption and there is no problem with the top plate being 3mm thick, so I can just use the laser cutter that I have next to my CNC to cut it. And just like that it was ready in 2 minutes. The one I made by hand was fun, surprisingly precise and would totally work, but this holes pattern is really helpful so I decided to use the laser cut one. And because the previous camera holder was just temporary I replaced it with a nice one and covered the sides with mylar foil. And just like that it was ready to be dropped in my kitchen, um, I mean Mars. <laughs> Let's try to move the robot.
All the files for this project are available on my GitHub. It's really inexpensive to build it. Unfortunately, it takes a lot of time to develop a project like this. So if you would like to support my work, I just turned on super thanks under my videos. Thank you very much for watching. Happy making. Bye.